all right welcome everyone to my channel and here we have an Olympiad mathematical challenge okay now the question is 9 to the power of x minus 1 all over 3 to the power of x plus 1 equal to 8 what there will be the possible value of x okay now s could be a real number it could be imaginary number but whichever form s is going to take let's go ahead and solve for the possible values of x from these um, challenge we have here now this is online mass tv where we learn mathematics every day okay it will be of a great benefit to you to subscribe to this channel because yeah we train our brain on how to handle mathematical challenges okay now let's go into today's challenge without much waste of time so we take our solution so let's take here solution so the question is 9 to the power of x minus 1 okay minus 1 all over 3 to the power of x plus 1 everything equal to 8 okay now the number one thing we do here is easy is to multiply both sides of the equation by what we have at the denominator here which is by 3 to the power of x plus 1 because according to the law of equation it says that whatever you do to the right hand side you must also do to the left hand side so if we go by that we're going to have this to be your 9 to the power of x minus 1 equal to your 8 into your 3 to the power of x plus 1 very easy okay so if we open up the left hand side of our equation we're going to have this to be your 9 to the power of x minus 1 equal to 8 dot 3 to the power of x your dot here means multiplication okay there plus we also use this a to multiply one to give us here now let's take all the terms on the left hand side to the right hand side because we are having a constant term here we're also having a constant we're having 3 to the power of x multiplying it here so let's send everything to the left hand side so we're going to have this to be your 9 to the power of x if we bring this let's take this first minus your 8 dot 3 to the power of x the let's take this one minus one this eight crossing the sign of equality again turns to your minus eight on the right hand side we are left with zero okay so we now have this to be your nine to the power of x minus eight dot three to the power of x minus minus one minus eight will give us minus nine equal to zero now we are having three to the power of x mind you we can equally write 9 as 3 to the power of 2 and so if we go by that this will now become 3 to the power of 2 close bracket r to the power of x minus 8 dot 3 to the power of x minus 9 equal to 0. okay let's continue on this other side now according to the law of indices we can rewrite this as the law says that if you have your a to the power of m n we can rewrite this as a to the power of m or in bracket to the power of n and we can equally interchange the exponent again to give us a to the power of n bracket m so we can apply that here okay so if we apply that here we're going to have our equation this now implies your three to the power of x okay close bracket r to the power of 2 minus your 8 into 3 to the power of x the minus 9 equal to 0 okay so we are having 3 to the power of x here we are having 3 to the power of x here so here we can bring in another alphabet to take the place of 3 to the power of x for us to get a quadratic equation from here so if we do that we're going to have this to be yeah we can say let let u be equal to your 3 to the power of x so wherever we see 
um, 3 to the power of x, let's put in u there. So we're going to have this equation to be your u to the power of 2 minus 8u minus 9 equal to 0. Of course, this is a quadratic equation. So let's solve this using the factorization method. Okay, because that is the quickest method of solving a quadratic equation. Although there are some um, quadratic functions that cannot be um, uh, solved uh, using the factorization method. But from what we have here now, we can use the factorization method to handle this. So let's go ahead to use the factorization method. Yeah, how do we get our, our two numbers? Bring out the constant here, which is 9. Bring out all the factors of 9. We have 1, 3, and 9 itself. So we bring two numbers from here that we will add it together. We give us minus e. Their multiplication will give us minus 9. And so here we're going to have 1 and 9. But what will not be the sign? We must put these two signs into consideration. Okay, the signs definitely we give us here plus 1 and minus 9. So we go ahead to impute this into the system. So here we're going to have here to be your u squared plus u minus 9u minus 9 equal to 0. Okay, lux u minus 9u will still give us your minus. Okay, so at this point, we cannot go ahead to put this in bracket, put this in bracket. Let's factor out things that are common to uh, both brackets. So, sorry, to each bracket, okay? Terms that are common to each bracket. What is common here is u. So, we bring out u. Here, we are left with u because u into u square will give us u. Plus, if we use this u to divide this u, we are left with, put this in bracket. Minus, what is common here is 9. So, 9 into 9 u, we, we are left here with just u. This minus, we multiply this minus to give us flux, then 9 into 9 will give us 1, close bracket, or equal to 0. You discover what we have in the first bracket is same what we have in the second bracket. So what we do here is we take the terms that are outside this and this that are outside and one of the terms in the bracket. And so we proceed from here. And this will now give us here your u minus 9 close bracket bracket u plus 1 equal to 0. Here we use the zero product rule. We say that we equate this to 0, we equate this to 0. So if we do that, we're going to have u minus 9 equal to 0 or u plus 1 equal to 0. If we collect our light terms, we're going to end up having u is equal to 9 or u is equal to minus 1. Therefore, we have our u equal to 9 or minus 1. Okay, but recall in the first equation, in our initial equation, we don't have u. What we have is x. x is what we have as our constant. So how do we now bring back our x? We cast our mind back to where we said let u be equal to 3 to the power of x. And so we can say here, recall, yeah, we can say recall, we said let u be equal to what? 3 to the power of x. So we have two cases here now. So we have case 1. We have 9 in here. So let's take case 1. Case 1. What is our u? u is equal to 9. We proceed from here to solve for the first u. Let's solve for the first u here. Okay. So bringing down our equation here, we're not going to have this to be your... 9. So, so we're going to have the first case to be your 9 equal to 3 to the power of x. We can rewrite 9 as 3 to the power of 2. So we got this to be 3 to the power of 2 equal to 3 to the power of x. The basis are the same. And so they can cancel out and now equate the exponent. So if we equate the exponent, we're going to have your x equal to 2. Very easy. All right. 
So this is the first root to our equation, okay, our lipid mathematical challenge. If we look at our second case, which is minus one, this will give us an imaginary root. But how do we now solve for this imaginary root? How do we get the imaginary root? Now, we're going to use a special formula. But let's take our case two. So we have here case two. In our case two, we have our u equal to minus one. This is our u. All right. Now, if we substitute this into our equation, which is u equal to 3 to the power of x, what would that give us? So here, we're going to have this to be your um, 3 to the power of x equal to your minus 1. Here comes a little challenge. How do we now manipulate this? How do we manipulate this expression we have in here now? According to Euler, he propounded an equation. Euler equation states that your e, which is your natural log to the power of pi, i plus 1, this is equal to 0. Okay? So, if we decide to move this one to this other side, we're going to have our Euler equation to be your e to the power of pi, i equal to minus 1. Good. What do we have here? Here we have minus 1. And so, we can replace this minus 1 here with our Euler identity, which is your e to the power of pi i. Okay, so if we do that, we're going to have this our equation to be, so this now implies your 3 to the power of x equal to your e to the power of pi i. Good. All right. We're getting there. Having established this fact, then what do we do to get our x? Because we want to get the value of x. We take the natural log of both sides, which is our in. So this will give us in of your 3 to the power of x equal to the in of your e there to the power of pi i. Again, let's continue on this other side to finalize our equation. So good. Now, if you look at this, this natural log, we go with this natural log. We are left with pi i. So the whole of our equation here now becomes your i into your 3 to the power of x equal to your pi i. All right. Now, according to the law of logarithm again, this guy comes back here. Okay, so if we move this guy back, we're going to have your x into our i n of 3 equal to your pi i. So we divide through by your i n 3. Then divide this one by i n 3. So if we do this, what happened to this 16? This we go with this. So we are left with x on the left hand side of our equation. So we now have here, therefore our x is equal to your pi i all over your i n of 3, which is natural log of 3. Okay, so this is our second root, which is x2 to our olipid challenge. This is our x1 and this is our x2. Okay, if you put these two values, into the equation, you're going to discover that they will both satisfy the uh, equation you have there to show that they are actually correct, okay? Now, if you learn something good from this solution to this Olympiad question, drop it in the comment section. If you're new here, consider subscribing because here you're going to learn many tricks to Olympiad mathematical challenges and other exams, okay? In your colleges, you're going to find it very interesting, okay? You're going to learn a great deal of work from here. All right, this is Online Mass TV, and my name is Jigs Animo. Remember, I love you so much, and every one of us at Online Mass TV love you so much because you are always there. Bye for now.